Hey, what's up guys, John here. I'm the most optimistic guy, especially when it comes down to real estate business, investing in money. I love investing and I love underwriting deals based on core fundamentals and things that really make sense. But the last two years, there's been so much that's happened in the world, so many calls that have impacted all of our lives that it's made me second guess certain investments because I personally believe that this whole thing is kind of like a game of musical chairs, except someone else is controlling the music. And now what I'm seeing right now in New York is that they're saying from now until 2026, they are going to see twice the vacancy rate that they did during the core focus in April, March, April, May of 2020. When everyone left New York City, vacancy rates were about 10%. They're saying they're going to 20% from now until 2026. California, they have the eviction moratorium pushed out until June of 2023 in Los Angeles. And when all this stuff broke down, right in the beginning, I said, you know what, guys, I don't think that this is going to end until at least 2023 for the eviction moratorium in LA. Everyone said, oh, you're, you're just selling fear. You, know, you just want to make money on video views and blah, blah, blah. But here we are, June of 2023. And I personally think now I undershot that. It might go until 2025 or 2026 because if we pay attention, LA and New York pretty much, they represent a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, similarities. When LA does something, New York does something. When New York does something, LA kind of does something. And so if they're saying that vacancy rates are gonna go to 20%, we have to ask what is going to be the aftermath and what is their solution? Because when we look at what Mayor Adams is doing, he wants to pump a hundred billion into social spending in, in New York, hundred billion dollars. If we really take a look at what this would do, it's going to restructure and change everything that we know about New York city and possibly everything we know about LA and maybe the city that you live in right now, because these, these cities are like anchors in America. California, California is the gateway for Mexico. You look at New York, New York is the financial hub. Everyone from Europe, all the businesses, all of the large private equity firms, they're located in the Big Apple for the most part, for a reason, the close proximity, there's a lot going for New York. But when New York and LA both go through the same type of changes, what ultimately happens? We start to see this change come here. But this is what Mayor Adams is doing right now. This just came out. Mayor Adams' slow return to offices will complicate New York's economic recovery. The Big Apple's road recovery will be long and complicated. City Hall projected in the budget documents released this week that it expects at least 20%, 20% of the five boroughs office space will remain empty throughout 2026, at least at least 2026. That's double the pre-pandemic vacancy rate, which sat at about 10%. And the first time, the vacancy rate has soared about 15% for a sustained period of time since the crippling recession in the early 1990s. And Mayor Eric Adams told the Post editorial board on Wednesday that op ongoing resistance from employees to returning to work in Manhattan's massive office towers will complicate the city's rebound from the pandemic. We know that post-pandemic, we're going to be dealing with a lot of different universe. May go on for four-day work week for some. Hisner has argued repeatedly, and many experts agree, that failing to get the white-collar workers back behind the desk in Midtown and Downtown will have a domino effect that could further hurt the city's recovery by reducing the need for many service industry jobs like cooks, custodians, and cleaners. We need to get back to the office. We need, he said, during a 30 minute interview, the accountant must go to the restaurant. They must bring the business travelers. The risk to the city is on the commercial property tax side as these vacancies rise and value these buildings fall. This is ultimately when you're buying a multifamily property, an office building, a retail center, anything that you're buying that is a uh, commercial, essentially it's all underwritten by a couple couple key factors. First is going to be cash flow, the net operating income. And generally, in a place like New York City, the cap rate might be a 3 or 4% cap rate, meaning if you paid all cash for the property, you'd probably get about a 3 to 4% return, net operating income. And that's based on a very low vacancy rate. Vacancy rate might be around 3% in New York City, you know, pre all this stuff. Now it's going to, now it's going to 20%. If 20% less vacancy, meaning less people are going to need that office space, meaning rents are going to fall and there's going to be a large gap in vacancy. So what does that mean? It means values are going to plummet. And if values are plummeting, what does that mean? Tax revenue is going to fall, meaning police officers, uh, street services, tax revenue, everything is going to come down and there's going to be less safety in that city simply because they don't have the capital and the infrastructure to protect 
the city. So we're going to likely see crime pick up a lot in New York City. However, could be some really big buying opportunities for real estate investors, maybe in 2025, maybe in 2026. They said at least 2026. So it, this might drag on for a little while. If values fall or values grow less quickly, that means ultimately either less revenue or slower growth in property tax revenue and commercial properties tends to pay a desperate share of the city's property taxes. The financial projections include Adam's $99.7 billion spending plan, includes $5 billion in capital housing spending over the coming 10 years, instead an increase from $17 billion over that period to $22 billion or $500 million per year. It's the biggest housing investment in generations. So if we look at core fundamentals, economics, the key is to buy low and it's to sell high. If what they're saying is a 20% vacancy and there's going to be increased crime and there's going to be less travelers, there's going to be less tourism, the desirability to be in the city is likely going to fall, correct? And if the value of properties are falling and they're investing all of this money into property purchases, what does that mean? It means they're likely going to be buying at low price points, right? So if you are intending to buy in New York City, it might be, it might be smart to follow the money. It might be smart to follow the money. They're saying that they're with this, he met a candidate last year, agreed to make $4 billion in a commitment that we are recommending and called it a smart ask. So they're, they're really gonna dump a lot of money into this city. They're saying 6.3 billion in fiscal reserves, 1.2 billion, I mean, a $98.5 billion preliminary budget, $99.7 billion budget, beefing, beefing up social spending. That figure has ticked up 10% in just the last two months as the initial wave of the pandemic receded. The slow pace of the return and the transition to a more work from home centric economy is forcing Adams to eye the potential ideas for converting some of the empty offices and commercial space into housing. It's really going to come down to whether our zoning regulation and regulation laws are flexible enough to allow for property owners and tenants to work through these vacancies and repurpose these buildings where it makes sense. The real estate expert says right now, we don't have enough flexibility where there's vacancy and floor plans that make sense. The mayor acknowledged during the virtual sit down that those evaluations are only beginning to get underway. There's a lot of things that we must do when we're going to sit down with a team of people to see what this post life will look like. Adam took pains during the interview to highlight the bright spots in the city's economic picture, pointing out that the five boroughs are gaining jobs back at a rate that is now faster than the country. Currently, the city's unemployment rate is 6.5% down, more than two thirds from the high of 21%. That job hole was so deep that the city's budget winter estimate that the Big Apple will not return to pre-pandemic levels of employment for at least another two years until the third quarter of 2024. That two-year timeline is an improvement over earlier projections when officials believed it could take until 2025. Still, New York's rate lags. The 4.6% statewide unemployment rate with a 3.6% national rate, we're doing something right. They, they believe that it's gonna take four more years in a best case, four more years, at least four more years. But during from now until then, they're gonna see, and they're projecting, vacancy rates of 20%. I believe if you are intending to invest in real estate in New York, you're better off waiting. That's my opinion. I think the high-end real estate market is likely gonna see more pullback, especially as mortgage rates rise and affordability of these properties gets more and more challenging. And I believe they're likely gonna have a lot of plans in which they're going to be able to raise capital for social spending. $100 billion, they can't just print that out of thin air. They're likely going to be increasing taxes. They're going to be doing certain things over the coming few years because once they spend the $100 billion, they're going to continue investing and investing and investing. This is likely the beginning of it. But I'm curious, where do you see this going? Where do you see New York City real estate going? My, my thoughts have consistently been that things don't make much sense to me, especially in Los Angeles and New York City real estate. A lot of expensive markets are very questionable right now. And I do believe real estate is an incredible, incredible investment. 
But the real key is gonna be knowing your market, investing well, buying the right assets, putting smart debt on these properties, and having a really smart plan, a really smart strategy. Not simply just looking at things saying, oh, okay, I'm just gonna go buy this asset because history has proven that this asset generally does well over time. You wanna buy something that has core fundamentals, real intrinsic value that you're buying, ideally for, for land value. You're looking for incredible deals right now as a buffer because all markets look very, very delicate. And to me, you want a moat of safety. You want an area of protection. Because when they talk about stuff like this until 2026, it makes me question, not just New York, not just LA, but all of America. Are we stepping into another potential problem over the next three months, six months, 12 months, and if so, we always have to remember that fortunes are made in times of fear. Fortunes are made in times of fear. This is an incredible time right now to learn a new industry, to stack capital, to build credit, to get prepared, and to really, really learn. Because when everyone's afraid and everyone's panic selling, that is exactly when you wanna be a buyer. That's exactly when you wanna either raise capital or you wanna put money to work. You wanna have a team behind you to go out there and execute. Because what's ultimately gonna happen is there so many people that think that this is just gonna go on forever and every price is just gonna continue rising with inflation. But there's a lot of other people that are sitting on the sidelines with so much capital. I'm talking Wall Street. A lot, a lot of money. Trillion dollars in cash on the sidelines waiting for opportunity. There's a reason for it. Drop your comments below. Hit the like button, subscribe here. Consider subbing to my second channel. It's gonna be a podcast on the 4th of May. Also on LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram. We'll leave everything down or on the banner. All right, guys, catch you later.